Hey everybody, welcome back to Living Traditions Homestead. Well, today we are out in our corn and watermelon garden. This entire garden is growing only those two things. And we've got some exciting news to share with you. We were expecting the watermelon and the corn to be ready for harvest at the same time. And we were expecting it to be in about 10 days to two weeks. But we came out to the garden the other day, just about two days ago to check on everything. Because honestly, this garden we don't come out to very often because it's just kind of sitting here growing and being watered and, and waiting for harvest day. So we came out about two days ago and we were shocked to see, first of all, humongous watermelons. <laughs> and one of them was already to be picked. And I think by today, there might be even more. Once we saw that we actually had a watermelon ready to be harvested because the watermelon and the corn are about on the same time frame we decided it, we should probably check the corn and to our surprise some of the corn is ready to harvest yeah in fact quite a bit of it is ready to harvest initially we thought it was just going to be a few random ears but as we started looking there is a lot of corn to be picked now a lot of you warned us early in the season that maybe we planted too much corn We'll see how we feel about it when we're done picking it this year, but we planted 16 50 foot rows of the peaches and cream sweet corn because not only do we want to be able to eat it fresh and we want to be able to give some to family and neighbors, but we also want to be able to can and preserve a lot of sweet corn for over the winter. So let's take a walk around the garden. We're going to start with the watermelons. Sarah is going to show you how to tell when a watermelon is ripe and ready to pick. This year we're growing two types of watermelons. One is called Crimson Sweet. And these are the watermelons here. They're nice circular basketball sized watermelons. This is our first year growing Crimson Sweet, but they come highly recommended. So we have one 50 foot row of the Crimson Sweet, but we also have another type of watermelon that we're growing. The other variety are these bigger watermelons, more oblong. They're called strawberry watermelon. We grew these last year. They're so fantastic. The flavor of them is so good. We've got another 50 foot row of these guys and we're excited to see if we have any more that are ripe to pick today. So I wanna show you guys a really easy way to tell when the watermelons are ripe for picking. There are a lot of old wives tales or folklore ways to tell if your watermelons are ripe. But what we've discovered this way, it's pretty foolproof and has been successful for us uh, whenever we've grown watermelon. So the first thing that you need to do is uh, find the stem end of the watermelon. So here's the stem and it's connected here to like the branch, you know, and right next to it, right across from it is this little tendril. See out here, it has a little curly Q on the end here. When this tendril or curly Q is dried up all the way down to the stem, the watermelon is ready to be harvested. So this tendril is very green. This watermelon is nowhere near ripe for the picking. So let's go try to find one that is ripe so we can pick it. That one, that one, that one. Really? This one could probably be picked or it could probably go another couple days. Well, if they can go a couple days, we need to let them go a couple days. Right. This one could probably go another day or two, but not much more than that. This one remarkably is not good. Well, here's one of the strawberry watermelons that is definitely ripe. Let me show you uh, the tendril. So here's the big watermelon. The, the stem comes down here. Here's the tendril. You can't see the curly cue because it's already dried and fallen off. 
but it is dry and brown all the way to the stem part here. So I'm going to harvest this. I'm just going to cut it off at the stem. Pull this away and set it aside. We can try this tonight. Oh, it sounds good. I can't wait. Well, it looks like there are several of these ready of both kinds. So we're just going to start picking them. I saw a couple of the Crimson Sweets over here that are ready to pick. One's a little bit on the smaller side, but it definitely looks ready. And then there's just a really nice size one just next to it over here. It's on the small side, but its tendril is dried up. I'm excited to try this guy. Look at that. That is a nice watermelon. Put that here for now. Our part's trying not to trip on all these vines. This one's ready. Small, but ready. You know, this will be nice when we give some to like some of our friends that are older, you know, just a mere older married couple. This will be a really nice size for them. Not too much, but they'll still be able to taste that nice, fresh, summertime watermelon flavor. I'm excited to share. Let's see what else we have. I want to give you a quick update, especially because you're seeing me lift watermelons about two months ago, actually about seven weeks ago, yesterday I had surgery, I had a hysterectomy. And so I've been, I've been on some physical restrictions that hasn't allowed me to, that hasn't allowed me to do any lifting and limiting my pushing and pulling. Well, today I met with a surgeon and I'm completely cleared to return to my normal work. Like I've just been, you know, laying around doing nothing. But now I can resume all of my work and I don't have to worry about injuring me, myself. Thank you guys so much for keeping me accountable, for watching over me and making sure that I wasn't doing what I wasn't supposed to be doing, and for praying for me. I appreciate it. So I'm all better and I'm feeling fantastic. So 13 watermelons on our first picking of 2020. That's pretty fantastic. But what's even more fantastic is the number of watermelons that are still in the watermelon patch just waiting to finish ripening so we can pick those and just eat the heck out of watermelons this summer. We're so excited. But that's not all we're excited about in this nice garden. The other thing is our sweet corn. We have never tried, really tried, to grow sweet corn. This year, we gave it a really good shot and I think it's gonna turn out well. So let's head over to the corn and see what we can find. All right, let's take a look at the sweet corn. Now again, this year we grew 16 50 foot rows of the peaches and cream sweet corn. This is a variety that we were told does really well in our area and it looks like it lived up to that because it is doing great. Now I'll be honest with you guys, we picked about a dozen ears last night and the night before just to eat fresh. Uh, we had mom and dad over for dinner and we uh, put some on the grill and it was fantastic. So I'm gonna pick an ear and show you guys kinda how to tell when it's ready and uh, see what it looks like. So when you're looking at your corn, you can see some of the ears especially these littler ears now the peaches and cream seem to get two ears per stalk so on a lot of these it looks like the top ear is ready and the bottom ear isn't quite as big yet so we're trying to leave the bottom ones but you can see like on this there's still some green on the silk so that tells me that that is not ready to be picked yet but if you look like on an ear like this here now I've already picked a lot off this front row so 
this this ear here all of the tassels are dried up and when you touch them they basically fall right off that tells me that that ear is ready to pick so let's pick that one and take a look at it now i do want to tell you that we do not spray our corn we don't use any chemicals uh, in our corn patch at all so we do have some worms in our corn they tend to be in the top a little bit which is no big deal to just cut off and that way we know we're eating good organic corn so uh, i'm going to peel this open and there is there's a little bugger right there at the tip but let's take a look at this as you can see i guess i'll just peel this one all you can see how beautiful those kernels of corn are now again you know some bug damage up here but no big deal most of this corn after we're kind of full of eating it fresh most of this we're going to be cutting off the cob and preserving for the winter either by canning or by freezing so we'll just cut that part off no big deal and then we'll cut the rest of the kernels off but look how great that corn looks and i can tell you guys this is absolutely delicious now if you're still wondering whether or not it's ready to harvest after you've picked some what you can do is you can also take a knife or your fingernail and you can poke into the kernels and you can see that it comes out a milky color that tells you that that is ripe if it wasn't ripe and ready to pick it would come out clear so this looks perfect we're gonna hopefully pick 60 ears tonight because sarah thinks that's what we're gonna need for dinner tomorrow plus for her to can her first batch of corn for the summer so we're going to get busy we're hoping we can get 60 ears picked in the next little while um, we're, we're going to try to work by the row so that we don't forget where we left off so i think we're probably going to pick about two rows tonight picked two full rows and then we went back over the rows that we already picked the other day now we didn't pick everything on the two new rows we left probably a third of what was there because it wasn't quite ready and we ended up with about 75 ears off those two uh, let's let's call it three rows i guess about 75 ears so i think that's really good we're going to pack this up and take it all back up to the house by our picnic tables and then we're going to cut one of these watermelons and taste some of the corn and show you guys how delicious this is. We're back up at the house and it's time to do some sampling. So we're going to try tonight one of the Crimson Sweet Watermelons. Now this is a variety we've never grown before so this is going to be the very first time we're trying one as well. The strawberry we grew last year and we've already eaten one this year and I can tell you the flavor is amazing. So good. But the only downside is they do have a lot of seeds. Yeah. Now, personally, I don't care, but I do know that, you know, when you're selling at a farmer's market or things like that, people do prefer, well, they really prefer the seedless, which we don't grow seedless. Watermelons are supposed to have seeds, but they would prefer ones that don't have a ton of seeds, and these really do. So we're anxious to see whether or not these do and how they taste. So I think this, this is a beautiful looking watermelon. We're going to just go ahead and cut it in half and see how it looks. Ooh. Wow, that looks good. Very good. Yeah, look at that. All right. Definitely going, seeds in there. Definitely seeds in there, but let's taste it and right. see. Doesn't look like maybe as many seeds. Oh my gosh, it looks so sweet. Yeah. It's so juicy, guys. 
Let's take a slice off of here. Now both the crimson sweet seeds and the strawberry watermelon seeds that we have are from Baker Creek Heirloom Seed Company. Uh, they're a wonderful company. They've been very good to us and they have provided us with some amazing seeds. And they're right near us. Yeah. They're only about uh, less than a half hour drive from our from our house. So, yeah. all right. There's only one way to know if it's a good watermelon. That's to try it. Super wow. juicy. Really sweet. Mm hmm Really sweet. Very good. Yeah. Mmm. Yeah, I think it's I now, think it's just as good as the strawberry. You know, from watermelon to watermelon, there's gonna be a little bit of difference. This is very good. I think the strawberry watermelon might have a little bit more watermelon flavor. Yeah. But these are really fantastic. The other thing that's really good about uh, these Crimson Sweet Watermelons is that they're not so big. If you don't have a big family or if it's just, you know, the two of you, I think that this is a really good size to grow for a smaller family or for just a yeah. couple or a retired couple. Last year on the strawberry watermelons, our biggest one weighed just under 30 pounds. It was yeah. like 29 and a half pounds. So those are big watermelons. Um, I don't think this year they're nearly that large. But no. they're just as prolific. I'm not sure what the difference was. I think our summer was quite a bit hotter this year yeah. so far. So um, maybe that played some role in it. I don't know. These All right. We took the watermelon in the house. I'm pretty sure the kids are eating the rest of that <laughs> entire watermelon right now. But that's okay. So we're going to move on to trying some of the corn. Now, again, this is the peaches and cream sweet corn. Let me peel this. Shuck it. Now see, this one barely has any worm damage at all. Just a tiny bit at the tip. Personally, I would rather deal with some of the worms and grow things organically than to, uh, you know, poison all the worms and potentially poison us as well. So, but that's everybody's decision. You do what you think is best for your family and your situation. All right, I've got that all shucked, and we're just going to cut that tip off where the worm damage is. And you know what? The pigs love it, so we'll save that for the pigs. Let me get some more of that silk off there. And look, just look how beautiful that, that is corn, corn is. That is amazing. Now, when you are harvesting sweet corn from your own garden and it's this fresh, you know, you don't even really have to boil it. It's just so tender and so sweet. You can just eat it right off the cob, just fresh. Now, it is better if it's hot and steamy with some butter just drenched on there and salt, uh, maybe a little bit of black pepper, but you can just try it just like this and it's so good. That's what I'm gonna do. Yeah. That is Isn't that good? super sweet. That's amazing, you guys. No wonder the raccoons like it so much. Speaking of raccoons. Yeah, one of the reasons we decided to start harvesting, we were gonna try to wait another week, even though we thought it was about ready. We were like, maybe we should wait another week and see if the kernels get bigger, which I don't think they need to. But one of our neighbors let us know that they lost their entire patch of sweet corn every to, single stock to raccoons just a couple nights ago so that made me think you know what i'm not going to put it off anymore we're going to get busy harvesting because it's not you know we're growing enough that it's not a one day process it's going to be over the course of like the next week that we can pick all of this and get it put up for winter so i've learned that lesson in the past that you procrastinate you think oh maybe i'll just wait a little bit longer and then all of a sudden the raccoons get them yeah it we had that happen with peaches one well, peach one last peach. year last year we had our very first peach on our tree we put our trees in about four years ago and it had the very first peach we ever had that made it to like maturity and sarah and i both looked at it we thought you know what we're gonna leave it one more day and we'll pick it tomorrow morning we came out the next morning, it was laying on the ground, and like half of it was gone, eaten by a raccoon. And we thought, we should have brought it in the house, and we should have, you know, let it ripen on the counter. We learned so, our lesson. We learned our lesson. We sure did. So from now on, no more procrastinating. Look at this beautiful corn, you guys. This is amazing. So the next week or so of our lives, we'll be picking and shucking and canning corn. 
eating watermelon. I've been showing on Instagram all the tomatoes that we've been harvesting and the girls and I have been canning. So we are busy here on the homestead. Right. But you know, this is what it's all about for us. And yeah. it's just all the hard work is coming to fruition and we're able to reap what we've sown. We're so blessed, we're so thankful. And uh, so we're re really happy to be busy. We'd love to hear from you guys. How are your gardens doing? Are you starting to put up a ton of stuff for winter as well? I know this is the time of year you just, you feel so overwhelmed, but in, you know, December and January when you're opening those cans and thinking, my gosh, we grew this. It is such a rewarding feeling. You guys, thanks so much for spending time with us again today as we harvested and tasted some of the first fruits of the watermelon and the corn. We hope you enjoyed it. Make sure that you are sharing our videos on all your social media because that's the best way that you can help us. And until next time, thank you so much for stopping by our homestead. Take care and God bless. God bless.